To meet strong housing demand, National Development Minister Desmond Lee says more build-to-order projects with shorter waiting times will be launched where possible, subject to site and infrastructure readiness. Taking questions in Parliament on housing availability and affordability, Mr Lee also explained why the income cap for renting under the Parenthood Provisional Housing Scheme will be retained. Brandon Tonotto with more. The Parenthood Provisional Housing Scheme, or PPHS, is a temporary and subsidised housing option for eligible households as they wait for their new flats to be completed. While we are on track to double the supply of interim flats for PPHS between 2021 and 2023, the supply remains limited. As such, we will retain the income ceiling so as to continue prioritising those who are less able to afford renting on the open market. MPs asked about alternative options for households that can't get interim flats. In relation to the number of applicants who satisfy the current criteria of, of meeting the salary uh, ceiling of $7,000 or below, uh, how many people um, who satisfy the salary income still can't uh, get the PPHS units and uh, what options are there for them? Since August of 2021, 1,930 families were eligible for PPHS and had applied. Uh, about 580 of them were invited to select the PPHS flat, of whom about 330 selected and were allocated such a flat, and 250 did not select the flat when invited to do so, which suggests that they, had, they didn't, either did not like the option that was made available to them, uh, or they had other uh, housing options. The remaining 1,350 applicants were unsuccessful in their ballot. The minister adds that on average, about 47% of applicants invited to select flats decide not to make a selection. This means others down the queue will get their chance and that ensures that the flats are occupied. One MP raised his suggestion about waiving or reducing the minimum occupation period or MOP for resale flats to increase the supply of these flats and lower their prices. The answer I was given then was that may not be a viable solution because those who sell resale flats will go back into the market. So would the minister consider waiving or reducing the MOP period for those who sell resale flats but don't intend to go back into the market, say for those who are moving to stay with their children or maybe even upgrading to private property? Generally, we, we don't waive, but we do look at case individual applications on a case-by-case -case basis to understand the circumstances they face in deciding whether to grant the waiver of MOP or not. But whether we will do so uh, uh, in order to increase the supply of resale flats in the market, I'm not quite so sure. All right, the, when people, uh, when you shorten the MOP period, uh, most of the time you see uh, that then there will be demand in other parts of the market. HDB has ramped up BTO supply to 23,000 flats a year in 2022 and 2023. It's also prepared to launch up to 100,000 new flats from 2021 to 2025 if needed. The Housing Board has waived the 15-month wait-out period for 220 private homeowners who obtained an option to purchase to buy an HDB resale flat before the measure was announced. They are among some 650 appeals that HDB received. Now, HDB will assess appeals on a case-by-case -case basis for a second group of private property owners who haven't obtained an OTP to buy an HDB resale flat. This group may have already committed to sell or have recently sold their existing private home. The wait-out period for private property owners was introduced to moderate demand in the HDB resale market. That says the National Development Ministry says that the number of private property owners buying HDB resale flats has doubled in 2021 and in the first three quarters of the year compared to 2019 and 2020. Proportionately, more current and former private property owners pay COV or cash over valuation compared to other resale flat buyers and they also pay higher COV amounts. This is generally because many of these private property owners have more financial means to pay for their resale flats as compared to first-time flat buyers or HDB upgraders.
As interest rates climb, the government is working with financial institutions to help HDB homeowners struggling to pay their loans. These include potential loan restructuring solutions, referring them to the housing board and social service agencies for assistance and helping them find accommodation when foreclosures cannot be avoided. In outlining these steps, National Development Minister Desmond Lee also encouraged homeowners facing difficulties to approach their lenders early. For HDB homeowners with housing loans granted by HDB, HDB has various financial assistance measures in place to help them, which include allowing them to reduce or defer their loan installments for six months, pay their arrears by installments within a reasonable period, and or extend their loan tenure to help reduce their monthly installments. Despite a higher interest rate environment, Parliament has heard that the household debt situation in Singapore remains generally healthy. The proportion of non-performing mortgages among financial institutions is low at 0.3%. The central bank is not expecting widespread foreclosures in the near to medium term. The number of foreclosures has trended down since last year and is at fewer than 30 units so far this year. If you look at it from a bottom-up perspective, MES account level stress test of new borrowers has assessed that most households, in fact, should be able to continue servicing their debt under stress assumptions of even a 400 basis points increase in interest rates and a 10% reduction in income.